Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be doing a clone on a body control module. It is for the 2006 Hummer H3. Um, these also go in uh, Colorado and I believe there might be one or two other vehicles that go in. Um, seems to be a huge need for these to be cloned over. I don't know what the deal is, why they uh, are constantly failing, but I get a lot of them. So we're making a video of it. And we're gonna use a couple different tools. Uh, we have the Autel tablet, it's a IM508 with the Autel XP400 Pro. Um, and we'll be using this little adapter to hold the EEPROM when we do it. Uh, we also have the EZP2023 Plus. A um, couple different ways of doing this. With the Autel, um, first things first, we're going to go into Programmer, Accept. Okay. Chip EEPROM, reading and writing, EEPROM, ST, uh, and so for those of you that don't know how to determine what number chip you're using, whatnot uh the best way i've found so this is the number on the actual chip and this is what we're going to be selecting in the actual software both the pc and the tablet um of what to write and the best way i found to figure that out is i have a program called tacosoft this right here so we'll open that up Go to select car, GM, Hummer, the H3, and it tells you right here, there's the dash chip, and it also gives you right here, the 25040, and that's what we're going to be selecting when we go into read and write these chips. So it's the 9500, 95 right there, EEPROM. And then we'll go, the first thing on the tablet we need to do is go here to set. Yes, set verification. And we wanna turn all these on. That just makes sure that when it reads, that it gets a good read. Um, these can sometimes read, especially if you use the PC software for this, uh, it can read a bad read, and then you write the wrong stuff into the next EEPROM, and it doesn't work. What this does is it reads it, then it reads it again, verifies the two match, and then it gives you a 100% solid read. Um, go from there. And so the first thing, after we get to this, they say that you can just take one of these cables, plug it in, hook up to the chip, and it's supposed to read. It does not work. I've tried it with tons of different, uh, different cables like this. The one that came with the machine, this one with a stronger spring in it. Um, I've tried it all. Pinning each one. It, it just doesn't work for some reason. So the only way to move forward with this and the tablet is to desolder this chip. So I'm gonna take that off real quick and we'll be right back. So first things first, I'm gonna mark the orientation of the chip just so I know how it goes back on. I'm pretty confident that I can remember, but we'll just put a little dot right there so that we know that that is pin one. 
and the way that you tell pin one, sorry, from the other ones, see that little dot and see the tapered edge of the chip? So that means that this leg right there is one. Tapered edge, dot, pin one right there. And that's gonna be the red line on this. That's how you always know the orientation of it. All right, I'm gonna use hot air to, uh, to remove this thing. doesn't take very much. I think I have that set to uh, 325. So this is the original body control module and this is our donor. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and remove both chips. Right now I have this out. Easy as that, folks. Okay, now that I have that removed, we're gonna take this little uh, adapter here. This is pin one. I don't know if you can see that there. Let's see if I can get it to focus. Not today. Anyway, that little mark right there is pin one. So we're gonna grab this. Just gonna set that right in there with pin one. Just like that. We're gonna take it over here. You can see right here, the red shows you where the, the correct orientation of pin one. there like so flip that down read there we have it we have a solid read and what this will do this won't come up if it doesn't get a good read It'll say uh, air, and then it won't give you the chip data if it doesn't read. Read it twice, compare it, and they're the exact same. And that's what will happen if you don't desolder the chip from the board on these. So we'll hit save. So once you've typed in what you want to save it as, go to save. Okay. Now, we can take this chip out, and we're going to replace that with the chip from the clone module. Okay, I've inserted the chip from the clone module, and we're also going to read that one. Save it. Once we have what we want it saved as, save. Okay. Now we're going to go to right. We're going to select the one that we originally from the original body control module right here original okay all right chip written successful hit okay 
Okay. I'm gonna read it one more time just to make sure. There we have it. So once you're done with that, you can pull this chip off and re-solder it to the board right where it went. So we're also going to do this on the PC. This is the program we'll be using right here. Open that up. We'll go to find. Find. You can go down here in the search. Sorry, I already had it typed in. M950, select our chip that we want, okay, click okay, and again, this is with the, the XP400 Pro, we've just unplugged it from there and plugged it into the laptop now, go to read, have it you can see the the VIN is is right there a good way of telling if this one this way does a good read is if you can see the VIN um, if it does a, a read that's not gonna be consistent uh, or something you don't want to write it's not gonna say the VIN it'll just be a bunch of jibber jabber a bunch of stuff like these Y's and crazy stuff um, this doesn't have the the double check where it, it reads it twice and double checks and make sure you got a good read. So this way is kind of sketchy. Um, you want to make sure that you get this VIN 100%. If you don't see this VIN on this, do not write it to your next module because it's not going to be right and it's not going to work, guys. So once you have that, <clears throat> you just go up here to write. Okay, right, successful. You can reread it. No, we're not gonna save it this time. And you can see it all came back, nothing changed. We would see something change in here if it, uh, if it was a bad read. Um, we didn't switch the, the EEPROM because we already had done it with the, the tablet there. But you kind of get the gist of, of how to do it with uh, the PC program of it. Um, and on this one, if you do leave the chip on the board, same thing. It's not going to work. It's going to give you a crappy read. Um, but it will give you some data and it'll say that it read at 100%. Um, but don't, if that VIN isn't there, do not expect that to be correct. Um, and the next thing we're going to do... No... We're gonna read it with this other program right here. It's called Easy P 2023 Plus. Um, to do that, we're gonna go over here. We're gonna go down, select 9500. We're gonna select ST. And go right here and select the 95040. And then we're going to take this out, put it back on the board. And where did it go here? I'm gonna use this tool here. And this will read it right off the board. No problems, no unsoldering, no resoldering. So I'm gonna get this uh, soldered back onto the board and then we're gonna use that tool. Okay, now that we have the, 
EEPROM resoldered on there. We've hooked up our clip. We've already selected what we need in the software. We're going to go to read. Right there's that VIN number we're looking for. Again, with this one, you can leave the, the chip on the board, but always look for this VIN right here. If you don't see this VIN, you're not getting a good read. So we can go down. And what's cool about this is right here, this line right here, this is the mileage. If you ever get one and you need to change the mileage, right there is the mileage. And how we know that, so we go right over here. So say in this program here, tax off, that we want it to say 100,000 miles. So we put in a 100,001 100, miles right there. And we hit calculate. And this is what we need to input there. 17 D78400. Zero, zero. So we'll go back over here and we input it right here three times. And that will change our mileage. Once we're done with that, we can go to save. Save our file. We're not going to do it right now because we've already written this one. So once we're done with that, I'm going to get this switched over to the other EEPROM here on the clone. And we're going to write this thing with this. All right, have that switched over. And then go over here. Go up here. So I also wanted to show you what happens if you try to read the EEPROM while it's on the board with the XP400 in the software <clears throat> on the computer. See how it says, yeah, it was successful. This is what you get for data. And so like watch that and that. We'll read it again. No, we don't want to save that. See how that changed? So it read different data. Um, and it'll do something similar on the tablet. Watch. Unplug that USB. Plug into there. Cancel. Read. to reset the clip here quick. If the clip isn't making a good connection, that's what'll come up. Right there, verification error. Because when it went to read it that second time, the data wasn't the same. So that's what you'll get if you don't desolder this EEPROM chip. Um, this is a much cheaper tool, so don't ask me why it outperforms this and, and the tablet when it comes to, to doing these, um, but there is two different ways that you can clone these. Take your choice. Thanks for watching. Feel free to, uh, subscribe and, uh, Give me some ideas of different things that uh, you guys want videos of.